Bellows Inside Edition Implosion he explains it. A means of entertaining his co-workers. We'll explain it by seeking the insight of a body language expert. That's ahead, but first time to count out the worst persons in the world. The bronze, the House Minority Leader John Boehner of Ohio. If you don't think the Republicans are really trying to present Barack Obama to American Jews as some sort of wild card about Israel or even an anti-Semite, listen to what Boehner did. Asked by the magazine The Atlantic if Israel is a, quote, drag on America's reputation overseas, Obama said, no, 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 but added that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, especially the issue of settlements, was a, quote, constant wound and constant sore. So Congressman Boehner promptly said, quote, Israel is a critical American ally and a beacon of democracy in the Middle East, not a constant sore, as Barack Obama claims. And after a switcheroo like that, Congressman Boehner is either a liar or an illiterate. The runner-up, Mark Salter, emerging as the chief media manipulator of John McCain's campaign. First, he was critical of Newsweek's coverage. It was not pro-McCain, thus, in his opinion, it must have been pro-Obama. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports Salter, quote, threatened to throw the magazine reporters off the campaign bus and airplane, according to people familiar with the matter. Mr. Salter says he expressed the campaign's displeasure and is talking to the publication about future access. Your straight talk express in action, suppressing freedom of the press. Incidentally, the McCainians have also complained about Countdown and want our coverage of their candidate altered, too. They don't like old man yells at cloud. You may be barking up the wrong tree there, buddy. Old man yells at cloud! But the winner, retired General Thomas McInerney, one of the propaganda spouters the Pentagon seeded into fixed news, presenting himself as a military analyst while he sits on the board of several companies still doing business with the Pentagon and the military-industrial complex. Mr. McInerney has a modest proposal worthy of Jonathan Swift about how to deal with Iran. He says the Bush administration needs to take two Iranian terrorist groups, funnel illicit money to them from somewhere in Mr. Bush's vast slush fund, and then, quote, start a tit-for-tat strategy. For every EFP, explosively formed projectile, that goes off and kills Americans, two go off in Iran. No questions asked. People don't have to know how it was done. It's a covert action. They become the most unlucky country in the world. What General McInerney is suggesting, while being paid simultaneously by the Pentagon and Rupert Murdoch, is that our country should go into the terrorism business. That we become exactly what McInerney spends the rest of his time telling us we have most to fear and fight and sacrifice for. Geez, General, maybe you're not thinking big enough. Maybe we could open up our own terrorism franchises in several foreign countries. We could blow up anybody we don't like, or soldiers, or civilians. If we're lucky, I mean, gosh, maybe President Bush will someday say that negotiating with Thomas McInerney's America is like appeasing the Nazis. General Thomas, yes, I'm prostituting myself, McInerney, today's worst person in the world.